Hi guys, it's April. So I was on Twitter the other day and I got a message from Steve over at the Law Gnome. He does this wonderful series called 10 for 12 where he collaborates with other YouTubers on a top 10 list. He asked if I wanted to be part of it this month and I'm like, heck yes. And then he told me what the topic was. I still agreed to do it. So here it is. I will leave all of Steve's information down below along with Hope Ortego and Denise Marie because they are doing videos as well so you should check them out. So the top 10 list that was agreed upon for this month is 10 personal celebrity narrators and their narrations. When you're reading a book what celebrity is in your brain reading that book to you? You're about to get an in-depth look into the crazy side of my brain and things that go on in it. First one I want to bring up is when I was reading Good Omen, Morgan Freeman was in my brain reading this story to me. Why? Well, because Morgan Freeman has played God and Good Omen is, of course, about the misplacement of the Antichrist. So it seems slightly appropriate, but at the same time, he has that full, rich voice that is wonderful to listen to, but it's got this edge of witty and snark to it at times, depending on what character he's playing at the time, that I think would play perfectly into Good Omen. Then you have Pride and Prejudice. When I'm going through Pride and Prejudice, Julie Andrews is reading this story to me. There is something royal about Julie Andrews and it just makes sense that she is reading this story to me with the Bennets and Darcy and it's just magical and I really need this one in an audiobook format because I would listen to it all the time. It would be wonderful. I can't not bring up Neil Patrick Harrison. For the longest time I just sat and I looked at my list and I'm like what could I have Neil Patrick Harrison read? He is such a diverse actor that I can see him in a lot of stories but I decided to go completely off script and Horror Store. Why, you ask? Horror Store is a horror story. Neil Patrick Harrison? Okay, if you have ever read Gadry Hendrix's writing, you would understand why I placed Neil Patrick Harrison in the narration role of this book. There is such a whippy style that goes on in Horror Store, and then it's this satire, which I think would play really, really well with Neil Patrick Harrison. I don't know how the horror aspect of it would go. It might come off really cheesy, but I still think it would be magical. It would be magical, just admit it. It's, it's something that you are all now thinking about and want. Station Eleven is a very gripping survival story that really lends itself to a very smooth narrator, but one that can play characters very well because it's got this diverse cast of characters. So when I was thinking about this story and reading this story, I started wondering if David Tennant would not be brilliant in the role of reading this story. I don't know if you guys know who David Tennant is. David Tennant is the wonderful 10th Doctor, but he has also done a lot of audiobooks, he's done a lot of children's stories, he's done a lot of everything, and his Scottish accent while reading is lovely, and he can do characters very well. So I think within the confines of the story of Station Eleven, it would, it would just work. It would. And plus I had to add David Tennant to the list because he's pretty to look at. Yeah, I have no shame. Eliza Duskew is not someone that you would assume would be good at a narration, but she has this innocence and hardness to her at the same time that when I read Sunshine, I can see her in it. They pair up in a weird way that makes absolute sense. Sunshine, as a character in this book, is this baker who 
is in her own little bubble, but then things happen in life and hardness and vampires. I might have made the leap because of the Buffy reference in there, but overall, she would be amazing to hear as Sunshine herself. So I can't get that association out of my head now. <gasps> Michael Caine has such a beautiful voice and The Night Circus is such a magical story that the two just go together. That English accent and the quality of his voice and then the quality of the writing of The Night Circus, it would be, I don't want to say magical because that might seem a little punny. I kind of still want to say that, but it, this is now another story I need to happen. Can someone make me a mixtape of all of these? Can, can I, is that, is that a thing? Is that possible? Please? <laughs> this next one, you're gonna think is such a cop-out, but it, I couldn't, my brain wouldn't let the pairing go because Helena Bohem Carter, she is such a trippy actress. She does the weirdest characters ever, and of course she is in Alice in Wonderland, and soon to be in The Looking Glass, that I think it would be really great if I could hear her narrate that story because she pretty much is the encapsulated persona of that story. She is the stereotypical weirded out, I don't understand but I really really like it. It is creepy and weird but I like it. Emma Watson, she is such an amazing person. She's a very strong-willed woman. So when I originally read The Circle, I saw Emma Watson in it. I know she has now been cast in the movie version of it, but I haven't seen that yet. So that didn't really sway me when I decided to put these two together. I had them together before I ever figured out about the making of the movie. Emma Watson will always carry that slight Hermione personification, but she has come into her own in such a way that with all the social commentaries that are inside of the circle, she would handle it very well and I think that would just be an amazing pairing and I can't wait to see the movie. I'm gonna throw that out there too. I'm gonna bring in another Buffy reference right now because part of me will always be in love with the whole Buffy franchise and James Marster reading Wool or even just the whole Silo series would be epic. And I'm not talking about in the English Spike version. I'm talking in his natural gritty voice. His voice brings me to a place of dirty and grimy and gritty and slightly western and a lot of dystopian. I've heard him narrate the Dresden Files series and it's, he's absolutely amazing in that and I think he would handle the Silo series just as well because it's just as dark as the Dresden Files is and plus he understands sci-fi so now I really... Guys, making this list is making me want to get these audiobooks. Last one I want to bring up for this wonderful topic is Maisie Williams and the Daughter of the Forest. I know Dee Williams has been in things like Game of Thrones and Doctor Who, which is where I originally know her from. I think with the way she does young but aged at the same time, that dual persona works really well in the Daughter of the Forest because of how much life makes that story and that it would lend itself to telling that story very well. You need a young voice, but you need a voice that carries the weight of age. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense. I'm assuming the people that have seen Game of Thrones and or the episodes of Doctor Who in which you're in may understand the references that I am throwing out right now. But in The Daughter of the Forest, it is all about growing up too quickly and having to save your family. And so I think she would work very well in narrating that story. So the next time that I read that story, I'm going to have her voice in my head. That's going to be a thing. So those are 10 celebrities that I think should read 10 of my most favoritest books ever. Okay, some of my most favoritest because English. Who would you want to read you and what book would you want them to read? 
tell me down below and then go check out the other videos. I'm excited to see what they say and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.